boredom, the desire for desire. It's like a great emptiness that spreads across everything, like the sky. It's the sickness of our time, yet most of us will spend our lives ascending to greater and greater levels of comfort. And we want to know that all this having and wanting and getting is making us happier. Because if not, what purpose does it serve? I'm an economics teacher, and economics as a discipline has tried to weigh in on the happiness debate. How many surveys have you seen lately of the happiest people from the happiest places? They are everywhere. Yet, any student in the first week of class will find out that economics studies how we have unlimited desires for things and how we're in competition with the limited resources of our planet. So how can we have unlimited desires for things and still be bored at the same time? Why is all this having and getting and wanting not making us happier? I think to find the answer to that question, we have to go back, way back, to the time when we started associating happiness with stuff. In the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson wrote the phrase, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It originally read, life, liberty, and property. The problem is, when we take something that is intangible, like happiness, and we try and quantify it and measure it, we make it into a commodity and we subject it to the laws of the marketplace. All these things will not make us happier. Money and things won't make us happier. Neither will honors, awards, degrees, recognition. When we have these things, we're afraid of losing them. We could be frustrated that we don't have more or bored with what we do have. What is it then that we want? What will make us happy? I believe that we want not the things that society tells us we should want. Honors, awards, recognition, wealth, power, pleasure. We were made not for the little things that this world can give to us, we were made for the great things that we can give this world. We were made for a life of significance and for joy. How can we live a significant life? And where do we find joy? Significance, the word, starts with sign. And that's what we need. Something to point us in a direction. First, we must decide to live with purpose. Because if we don't decide how to live our lives, someone else is going to decide for us. Purpose, says educational author Tony Wagner, starts with play. Doing the things we love when time slips away and we enter a creative space called flow. Recognizing these moments and building on them can help us find our passion. For many people, passion is the end in itself. It's like the golden key that unlocks every door. But for me, passion is more like a spark. To let that flame build up, we've got to fan it, we've got to give it some oxygen, and we need to give some time for that flame to build up. And the same is true with your passion. You'll be able to bring it along and develop it in the measure that you devote time and energy to it. And when you find your passion, lots of times we want to hide it. We want to cover it up. We want to hoard it and keep it for ourselves. Nothing could be further from the truth. We have passion, and it will develop into purpose, and it will lead to significance in the measure that we give it away. Think about it. Your talents and interests and abilities weren't given to you. You didn't pick them. They were freely given to you. And what you do with them must be freely shared with the world. That is not to say 
that great careers and fortunes were not built on giving the best of ourselves in the workplace. They were. But many times we get it backwards. We start by looking for money and we forget about our talents and abilities along the way. Money is not an end in itself, but frequently it's a result of excellence in whatever our given field. I can think of no better example of a person who lived a life of significance than Eugenio Garza Sada. He took a brewery that was in ruins after the Mexican Revolution and on the brink of bankruptcy after the Great Depression and built it into a great company that by the end of his life was made up of six, 30 different companies. Among them, Alpha, Vitro, and FEMSA. How did he do it? Eugenio Garza Sada gave back. First, he gave back to his employees. He shortened their work day from 12 hours to nine hours. He gave them health care before there was a Mexican social security system. And he gave them housing before there was public housing. But he also gave back to society. And he gave back through education. Don Eugenio knew that Mexico needed to develop the talents of its workforce in order to meet the needs of industrialization. So he founded a university, the Tecnológico de Monterrey, which today is a high school and university system with over 26 campuses across Mexico, serving almost 90,000 students. Eugenio Garza Sada's life and legacy continue to impact Monterey, Mexico, and the world. And for us, in the measure that we turn our view and look out to the world instead of inward at ourselves, we'll begin to live a life of significance. But what about joy? Where does joy come in? Well, unlike happiness, joy cannot be bought. It is not the result of an emotional state or luck or circumstance. Joy can't be bought, but it can be caught. Joy sneaks up on us in moments when we least expect us and wakes us up to a bigger reality. C.S. Lewis, a great hero of mine, said that joy has the characteristic that anyone who has experienced it will want it again. Joy is the antidote to boredom and the result of a significant life. Remember, what you know is not as important as what you do with what you know. It is not the same thing to take your economics degree and use it to engineer the next financial crisis as it is to take your economics degree and use it to solve the varied and complex problems that the world is facing, like income inequality and poverty, the list goes on. So use your powers for good. In the end, the good that you fail to do won't be done by someone else. It will remain undone. No one can do what you were here, put here to do. And when you recognize that, and put it into practice, your life will have made a difference. You will have found significance, and joy will have found you.